Hello and welcome to History with Jackson. Today we will be heading back to the Pope's series and we are looking at Pope Alexander VI today. We will look at who he was, what he did and if he was a good Pope or not. But before we get into the video, I'd really like to ask you to like and subscribe just so you can keep up with all my content here on YouTube. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So who was Pope Alexander VI? He was born Rodrigo de Borgia in 1431 in the Shativa region of Valencia in Aragon. He would go on to study law at the University of Bologna. Contemporary accounts also say that he was an intelligent, handsome and well-spoken man. In 1456, at the age of 25, Rodrigo de Borgia was appointed a cardinal by his uncle, Pope Calixtus III. The following year, he'd be made a vice-chancellor of the church. In his role as the vice-chancellor of the church, Rodrigo de Borgia would amass huge amounts of wealth and power, and this wealth and power was spread across several different popes' papacies. Throughout this period, Borgia was the Bishop of Valencia. However, before his ascension to the papacy and the death of his predecessor, he was made the Archbishop of Valencia. Very shortly after being made Archbishop of Valencia, Alexander VI, or Rodrigo de Borgia's predecessor, Innocent VIII, died. Alexander VI used his huge amount of wealth and influence that he had amassed throughout his position of Vice Chancellor of the Church to bribe his way into the papacy. Upon his election by the Curia, he chose the name Alexander VI. So upon his ascension to the papacy, Alexander VI followed precedents set by his predecessor and acknowledged his illegitimate children that he had sired whilst being a cardinal. However, despite this unpriestly acknowledgement, Alexander VI started his papacy in a strong way. He set about reforming the Curia. He increased the amount of cardinals that there were within. However, he limited the amount of bishoprics they could hold to one. He prevented cardinals from accepting lavish gifts and he also prevented them from taking part in noble sports such as hunting. He also prevented the papacy from selling ecclesiastical offices and properties. And ironically, he also prevented the selling of the papacy. From here on in, Alexander VI decided to focus on himself and his family's interests. He married off his illegitimate or now acknowledged children to rival and powerful families across Europe, such as the Milanese and the Aragonese. In 1493, Alexander VI went about dividing the New World between the Portuguese and the Spanish. However, this was unsuccessful as he had to revise this division because he had decided in favour of the Spaniards and the Portuguese were very unhappy with this. Alexander VI also had a strong reputation for torturing, murdering and imprisoning his critics with several of his critics and rivals poisoned or assassinated throughout his papacy. Despite all of these, Alexander VI was a skilled negotiator and diplomat. He was able to negotiate with Charles VIII of France to prevent any further invasion of Italy with his French forces. Alexander VI, through his sons, was able to recapture these areas and re-establish Italian or city dominance over their areas. Alexander VI was able to use Charles VIII's departure from Italy to re-establish a strong papal state. However, he removed the nobility that was already present within these areas and installed his own children as the new nobility. The last few years of Alexander VI's papacy was dominated by his son, Césaire de Borgia. Césaire Borgia used to be a cardinal. He was appointed at the age of 18 by his father, but had left the church to pursue his own noble ambitions. Alexander VI and Césaire imposed a terror upon the church. They poisoned, assassinated and strangled and imprisoned their rivals within the church. 
Nobody within the church felt safe. Within this terror, Alexander VI and Césaire set about seizing church property, selling church property to raise funds, and selling ecclesiastical offices to their friends and allies. There are various stories about the death of Alexander VI. One such story is that Alexander VI and his son, Césaire, who were both later ill at the same time, were dining with Cardinal Castelli. They were about to poison Cardinal Castelli. However, the Cardinal had a feeling that this was about to happen, so instead swapped their glasses. The Pope and his son would later fall ill at the same time. However, his son would pull through and the Pope would later die. One such story was that the year that Alexander VI died was a particularly hot year. The city and Italy were full of malaria and the plague, and that the Pope and his son caught one or both of these diseases. Pope Alexander VI would later die from these diseases, and his son would pull through. On his deathbed, it is said that Alexander VI was fully repentant. He was aware of a sinful lifestyle and repented so that he can get to heaven. Thus showing how deeply religious he was. So was Alexander VI a bad pope? He was a strong administrator and diplomat who managed to re-establish the Vatican as one of the powers in Europe that rivaled England, France and Spain. However, he was a bad Pope. The name Borgia has become a byword for corruption and nepotism. We can say Alexander VI was not a good Pope as he did not execute the role of Pope for the good of the church. He instead operated for the good of himself and his family. He murdered hundreds of people throughout his papacy in a ruthless and tyrannical way. So therefore, we can say that Alexander VI was a bad Pope. So thank you very much for watching my video today. Again, I just want to recommend a couple of books that I've used throughout. Um, again, it's John Jules Norwich. Oh, again, it's John Jules Norwich, The Pope's A History. Again, fantastic book. It's really easy to read. The section on Borgia is absolutely fantastic. Uh, I really recommend this book. The link to this book will be in the description below. And secondly, A History of Christianity by Dalaraid McCulloch. Fantastic. It's just, in my opinion, an un unrivaled book to look at for the history of Christianity. So, yeah, they are the two books, like I've said, that I'll be using throughout the series. They are great resources and they are available on Amazon. So that link will be in the description below. If you are enjoying my videos, please like and subscribe and share if possible. Um, I'm really enjoying making these videos for you guys and I love interacting with a wider audience. If you want to keep up with me in the meantime, please head to www.historyofjackson.co.uk or at History with Jackson on Instagram at History W Jackson on Twitter and I'm on History with Jackson on Facebook so you can find me on all those platforms and I look forward to seeing you guys all next week for the next episode in our Pope's series. Thank you guys.